Hello there and welcome to another ACI special of the Paytech Show. Last time we spoke to Swift about the Swift GPI and the ways in which ACI are onboarding their clients to the platform. Now this time we're sitting down with Citibank to talk about the benefits they've reaped from being on the Swift GPI. Once again, Craig Ramsey gives us the lowdown on the future of cross-border payments in the industry. First though, I met with City Treasury Solutions head Ebru Pakjan in London. How is the payment revolution actually improving your customers' experience? For our clients especially, which are really corporations, large corporations and institutional clients, what is very, very critical for them is to actually know where their payment is. I know it sounds like a very obvious and, and, and easy thing to say, but historically, especially for cross-border payments, that has not always been the case. Um, and actually knowing where your payment is, sometimes that can be a very, very large amount or sometimes it can be a very, very critical payment going to a particular supplier or sometimes even to your own employees. You really want to know where that payment is and what is happening. Is it being rejected? If it is being rejected, what can you do to affect it, etc. So right now, one of the most exciting evolutions or revolutions, so you could say, that's happening in the marketplace is around cross-border payments and getting that visibility to customers and, and that information. And of course, I just you know mentioned speed a minute ago, and speed is also very, very important because now with the trend of real-time payments, especially for those institutions who are interacting a lot more with consumers because of the advent of their own business, it is important for them to be able to actually do a lot more things real time because as consumers, we are all getting used to things happening you know, at the tip of a fingertip. So now an institution needs to be able to react to that. And if they are interacting with retailers or consumers, they need to be able to do things real time. And more and more real time infrastructures being rolled out across the globe means that now they have a way to do it. A decade ago, they really didn't have a way to do it or maybe they wouldn't had the capability in some markets. So those are some of the very exciting and interesting changes that's happening in the institutional or corporate payments world. Head of Real-Time Payments, ACI Craig Ramsey, once again, took us through some of the benefits of the Swift GPI. What are the benefits for GPI for both the bank and the customer? For the customer, it's visibility of the payment process. It's visibility of how much the payment costs, where it is in the chain, what the FX rates are. For the bank, it's the customer's self-service of being able to do that and the banks that we already have live are already reporting to us that they're seeing significant benefits to their back office where customers are not having to contact the back office to find out where the payment is. They can do it themselves. So they've got much greater self-service which reduces the cost of the operation for the bank itself as well. So could you give us an example of how a bank has worked with you on the SWIFT GPI? So we've now got 10 banks live on GPI. They were all using our money transfer system, payment engine. Um, so we were able to layer the GPI service onto the existing environment. We knew their environment, we knew how their back office systems worked. So to hook up our GPI connectivity into the SWIFT network was actually a, a fairly simple process. So what are banks actively doing and what should they be doing at the moment with SWIFT GPI? A lot more banks signed up for GPI than are actually live on GPI. And when we talk to the global banking community, we learn that not all banks have got answers for how they're going to be ready for GPI. GPI is inevitable. GPI is the future of SWIFT. It's not a sideshow on SWIFT. It's going to be the way that all global payments will be done through SWIFT in the future. And SWIFT have already made announcements that from 2020, GPI will be the new normal for global payments. So banks can't afford to sit back and just hope it goes away. It's not going to go away. And they can work with us, especially if they're struggling with their business cases, um, simple, simply understanding what's required to be ready for GPI. We have the experience, we have the solutions, and together we can help the banks get ready for, for GPI now. So can you tell me about your partnership with Swift? and what being on the SWIFT GPI means for your customers. SWIFT GPI is, you know, if, 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 you, if you actually step back and think about it, it's, 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 it's a very obvious thing that probably SWIFT and all the member institutions and banks should have been doing a very long time ago. And why hasn't it happened? Well, it hasn't happened for probably two reasons. Number one, there was no real impetus, nothing really pushing all these institutions to say that we must evolve, we must get there. 
And that's that's probably where actually something like blockchain comes into comes into picture because of all the thought process and ideas around, hey, we can do something like that on blockchain that actually created the drive, the push for the banks to think about how they can innovate. So that, that was one of the important reasons why you, know, you are now hearing or seeing SWIFT and the banks trying to innovate on the SWIFT network through GPI. But the second very important reason is the actual demand, the actual client need. And again, in the institutional payments world, which is actually what SWIFT is really used for large corporate payments to go on, Historically, that need for real-time interactivity was not required because you know, these institutions weren't really involved in digital flows or electronic commerce, etc. And as those type of trends evolve in the industry, the need for real-time information and real-time action increases. So those two things being put together a few years ago, when SWIFT came out to its largest user banks, which City is, is actually one of the top users and, and, and owners of SWIFT, when we sat back and said, what can we do in this environment? It was actually very, very obvious to go back and say, what do customers need? And the simple answer is they need that information. They need to know where their payment is, how is it traveling? If there's an issue with it, what can they do with it? And that's exactly how GPI was born. In a very, very short period of time, it has evolved. Number of member banks has now increased. And from City's perspective, that means there's going to be available data, which we are already through our electronic platforms and workflow systems that our customers are already very used to. We are making that information available to them and we are making it integrated. They don't have to know or, or care that it is coming from Swift GPI or anywhere else. It's part of their workflow. It's part of their life. Um, and that is very, very exciting. Now, we wanted to find out a bit more about the SWIFT GPI effect on cross-border payments, a service that has never been in high demand. How does the SWIFT GPI affect the whole cross-border payments model? Well, banks need to look at the future proposition for their customers, and predominantly we're talking about corporate customers here. Although consumers do send money abroad, that's not the target of GPI. It's very much a corporate um, proposition. Uh, that the banks are offering. So looking into the future, they need to think about how customers are going to want to make global payments. And traditionally that's only been done through the SWIFT network, but now with more and more companies offering different services for different reasons, with different service levels, different charges, different settlement risk, etc., uh, the banks will need to see a whole ecosystem of global payment methods. It's not just about SWIFT. So banks need to look at their infrastructure. We can't be treating SWIFT as a silo in the bank. Uh, SWIFT needs to be an endpoint. It's a connection point, but it's not the only connection point for global payments in the future. We'll see more clearing hubs. We'll see more uh, payment hubs actually routing payments based on the service level and the product offering that the customer wants to buy, the corporate customer wants to buy. And in many cases, the answer to how do I clear and settle this payment will be through SWIFT and correspondent banking. In other instances, some of the other propositions will, will be favourite there and, uh, and the banks will offer services accordingly. How will being on the SWIFT GPI improve cities cross-border payments. If I can just maybe pick up and pick up an example of how that would work. So let's 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 say if you're a corporation who is um, making supplier payments to a very large group of your suppliers, which you know for, for many companies now who are very globally connected, you might have suppliers, you might be a company based in the US or in Europe, you might have suppliers all over Asia. You're gonna have a few names which are Chinese, a few names in India and all the other places. Now, when you're making those payments through SWIFT GPI, we're gonna be able to tell you for those 10 payments that you have made of the 10, eight has already made it there and the two are still in, in the following phase. They are, they are on the way, they are with a correspondent or they are waiting for some sort of a repair. There's an issue with the account number, etc. So you can quickly actually do something about it. This is especially important in a globally connected world where electronic commerce is now reaching to suppliers, which are not traditional companies. There are so many small, medium enterprises or individually owned companies out there, which are becoming suppliers to large corporations. For those institutions, unlike a larger supplier company, 
money is everything, right? When they make that sale, they'd like to be able to get that payment. They'd like to know where that payment is. So it is going to allow our corporations to be able to make their payments more efficiently, have the visibility, get the money out there real time, and actually be able to develop their supplier network in ways that can fuel their own individual growth as well. The consumer, whether it be average Joe on the street or a huge multi-billion dollar corporate, do you see them dealing only with one organization or with then multiple organizations? I.e. they log onto their bank and they just deal with their bank for any cross-border payments as opposed to go onto one for one currency, one for another, etc. So corporates do tend to be very loyal to their banks. They might have more than one uh, bank as part of their banking portfolio, but in reality they don't change banks very often. I know there's, there's plenty of statistics about divorce and consumers changing their banks. Corporates are even more loyal to their banking uh, partners. And I think that's a very important word in, in the uh, discussion here is about a banking partner. Uh, a corporate needs to work with the bank to get the very best services so that they can make their payments, whether domestically or globally. Traditionally, that's typically involved multiple banks in order to deliver the full proposition. But now with open banking being a reality in Europe and indeed we're seeing it across the world too, corporates can actually use open banking to streamline their banking partnerships. They can still have multiple banking partners and they can still have multiple banks providing them the goods and services that they need in order to move money globally. But open banking actually offers them a a way of streamlining their connectivity into the banking environment. So a conduit. So Barclays have recently announced that they can be that conduit into the full banking system. They'll use other banks' open API network in order to access their goods and services. So Barclays become a, a, a streamlined point for the corporate um, in order to do their banking business. So the effect that the SWIFT GPI will have on the bottom line will just mean that as a consumer, be it corporate or retail, you can end up dealing with one organisation that has access to everything. You, you can, but typically again, the consumer is not going to be the big play in, in SWIFT GPI. I think most consumers, when they're looking to move money, even if they've used the SWIFT network, they'll have no idea that that's actually happened. That's very much a back office operation for the bank. The corporates, on the other hand, are, are kind of tuned into the SWIFT network and in some instances actually connected to it directly. So GPI for corporates is a, is a, a new initiative in 2018 where we're seeing direct connectivity between the corporates themselves and the banks for this GPI traffic. And again, this is all based on giving much, much better data to the corporate on where the payment is how to get it into the network, what the costs have been, what the foreign exchange has been. And again, that comes back to that proposition of if the customer knows where the payment is and how much it's cost and when it's arriving, they just get to plan their day and plan their business much better. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on The Paytech Show.